people, let's get to it. This has been a long time in coming. This is the FN F2000. And yes, it's fully licensed. What I do love about this packaging right here, it gives you a lot of information even before you go anywhere near the instruction manual. So straight away you can see that it does have a full length upper rail, metal outer barrel naturally, safety semi and full auto switch right there, metal gears, metal version 3 gearbox, a 9.6 volt battery is included in the box and a metal mag that holds up to 470 BBs. And then over this side, even more information down there, but sometimes you just can't go by what the manufacturers put on the box. We've got to get this thing open and see for ourselves. And I'm loving that it is fully licensed. It's not G&G, &G, it's SIMA or SEMA. <laughs> Let's not get into that again. Um, but yeah, it's still fully licensed. Put out by Cybergun, manufactured by Cyma, with the blessing from FN Herstal. Fabrique Nationale. Anyway, let's get the box open. Yes, this is looking very tactical. And you get some nice extras too. So, first thing first. You get a couple of A5 sized targets, won't be needing those. Um, you get an instruction manual, let's see if it's actually an instruction manual because sometimes these manufacturers don't really supply information specific to the actual Airsoft product and guess what, they do. Pretty decent manual. You also get an Allen key and another type of key for your mag. Right, uh, poison. Okay, uh, you get a free bag of BBs, a charger. That's pretty decent that you've got a charger. However, yeah, that's not for the UK, but I can always get an adapter. But why would I need an adapter? You know me, I don't use free chargers in boxes. I use one of these babies, a smart charger and Pretty decent of them. They've included a nunchuck style battery pack. And as you can see there, it's a 9.6 volt with a Tamiya plug. Right, any more for any more before we get to the actual 2000. Yes, you get a full metal high cap mag. And you know how I feel about these, rattle, rattle. But anyway, there's the wheel on the bottom and you know that key I showed you. If you don't want to use the wheel, you can Put your key in there and wind it up, just like one of those old school tin toys. <laughs> okay, there is something else, but I can't get to it unless I take out the main attraction. So let's just do that. Um, here we go. This looks so epic. Oh, look at this. Come on. <laughs> anyway, wait, oh, more poison. Um, here we go. Your cleaning and unjamming rod. Now would you look at this baby, oh, I tell you what, before we do anything, let me just uh, complete that picture, come on. So, do you know what, let's just go through the trades first before we do anything else. So, switching it around to this side, would you look at that, the actual FN Herstal logo and as you can see there it says licensed by FN Herstal um, there's your serial number don't worry about the jewels on this at the moment okay because that's what it comes with out of the box and this out of the box by the way shoots very hot however because this is a UK consignment model it would have been toned down a little. <laughs> so it's a legal version, so this will not shoot above 370, but we will do a chrono test a little later. But if you're in a country where your FPS limits are not as low as ours, yep, yeah, your bad boy will come out of the box shooting hotter. So on this side, it says FN Herstal, Belgium FN F2000. Now because it's airsoft, caliber, 
six millimeter. And here again, look, you have your FN Herstal logo. I'll tell you what, before I continue, I'm gonna get rid of all these horrid stickers. <laughs> okay, we are now sticker free. Let's take a look at this epic looking FN F2000 by Cybergun. Uh, look at the rear, look at this. Just like its real counterpart, a very large butt plate. It is rubberized, so it is very comfortable when you shoulder it. But yeah, beneath there is where you would put your battery compartment. In fact, if you look carefully, you can see the Tamiya plug trying to get in on the action already. But um, we'll get to that a little later. I won't take it off just yet because that involves an Allen key and I'm not ready to take that off just yet. We'll do that when I'm ready to power this bad boy up. And then right here you have your rear sling point. Now as we proceed, let's go along the top. You have your inspection cover. And just like its real counterpart, you can pop that up just like that to see all the action and see the rounds in there. But on this airsoft version, if you look carefully, that is where you adjust your hop up. That wheel, just there. Oh, very snappy. And then right here you have your integrated rear flip-up sight, which is also adjustable. And then along here you have your full metal rail. And talking about materials, as you would know, just like its real counterpart, the whole body right here is polymer. And then we get to the front sight, which is metal and adjustable. But let's bring it right back here as we continue to talk about this area of the F2000. So on this side, you're seeing the other side of what would be on that side, your takedown button. But we'll get back to that in a moment because I absolutely love that this bad boy pretty much takes down just like its real counterpart or similar. So as we bring it back to your full metal mag that I showed you earlier, absolutely loving the F2000's method of releasing your mag. So that's your big old chunky mag release. And just like its real counterpart, it's just one cool sweeping motion to release your mag. You literally go to grab your mag, push your hand up further, that will press your mag release and out comes your mag. Nice. Now, I was watching the Hickok 45 channel and naturally he had the real version. <laughs> and he was saying that you're pretty much stuck with that sort of mag unless you mod uh, different types of mags. Reason being is um, when you look inside here on the real version, there's sort of grooves or whatever that matches the um, design of these types of mags. So you couldn't really put a mag pull in there or, or anything like that. But if you look carefully, there's no such grooves in this Airsoft version. So let me just quickly try a different type of mag. Full polymer mag. Uh, no, it's not having it. Oh, hang on. E mm, mm, it's a struggle and I don't really want to force it. So uh, let me just try another one. Mm, no. Mm, no. Nah. No. Nope. I've tried a few magazines there, but no, they're not working. So um, yeah, I can confirm your standard Stanag mag is just the ticket. So as we move along, we get to this part of the F2000, which pretty much reminds me of the P90. Well, yeah, that sort of pretzel design, I like to call it, but very ergonomical, very comfortable to hold. Oh, and by the way, for those of you new to this sort of platform, you're probably thinking, yeah, that looks ugly. Pretty much like the P90. I absolutely think this looks nice. I like it. It's very futuristic looking. And yeah, of course, it being a bullpup, the action and mag is behind the trigger. What's the point of that, I hear you say? Well, basically, you get a shorter platform with the same or pretty much the same length barrel. Because if you can imagine, the barrel's all the way up there, but it comes all the way back to here. So pretty much you're getting a full length barrel and in some cases a longer barrel than even like a standard M4 but in a shorter overall package. 
Nice! So as we move along you have your fire selector switch uniquely placed beneath your trigger. Yeah, very strange, but it works. <laughs> so you've got your full auto, your semi-auto and your safe. And when we come to actually testing this bad boy, it would be interesting to know if it has that very nice trigger feature where you don't necessarily have to keep moving the fire selector switch to switch between single shots or full auto. All will be revealed a little later. So as we move along, we get to this nice futuristic looking handguard, your charging handle, which looks very odd almost looks as if it's broken but trust me it's not and look you can even lock it into place so as we move closer to the business end you have your sling points one there one on the other side and oh by the way as i've shown you about the hop up already we can get rid of this <laughs> And just like its real counterpart, you have a gas regulator. But on this airsoft version, it's a mock one, but it does move. Now would you look at this flash hider? Look at the shape of that. <laughs> and it's just like its real counterpart. So yeah, full metal flash hider, and you have a 14 millimeter counterclockwise threaded barrel. Right, let's get to the other side. Okay, here we are on the other side and there again you have your rear sling point, your serial number, and this is what I really love about some of these officially licensed Airsoft replicas because a lot of the functionality is very similar, if not almost exactly the same as its real counterpart because right there is where you begin to take this bad boy down. So, mag out. Now I know there are no rounds in here, there's not even a battery pack in here yet, so it's completely on safe. You begin to push this right in, so that you can pull from this side that right out. So if you like, as it were, it's like a pin. Good grief! This thing is really stiff. Probably because it's uh, brand new, but you will come out by order of the Peaky Blinders. There you go. <laughs> that was hard work. Oh, and by the way, this is full metal. Well, it wants to be because it would have broken if it wasn't. And now, just like its real counterpart, ha, would you look at this, comes right off. Right, <laughs> let's have a little nosy of the actual um, receiver. Um, take a look down here. What an epic view. To be fair, there's not a lot really um, to see down there. But yeah, that's the receiver, the main body. And here you go, look, the complete barrel and mock bolt assembly. And look, you can literally see right down. Let me see if I can focus it. There you go. That's right down through to the other end. Right, I've got to put these two back together and I'll tell you what, I will not shake the hands of an FN Herstal that won't go back together. Right, here goes. Wish me luck. <laughs> ah, that weren't too bad at all. <laughs> so as we move along, yes, we see again the fire selector switch because it's ambidextrous. As we move further along, we get to this bad boy right here. Now on the real version, behind this door is your ejection port. But for this airsoft version, it's just for show. Yes, because when you're firing this bad boy in the real world, all your bullet shells or casings will come flying out of here. Now there's no need for any of you perfectionists to pause the video, enhance the quality of the still frame to tell me, oh, Airsoft Mike, I think you will find that is the incorrect caliber shell that you used. Okay, so whilst I've been filming this video, I had these bad boys on charge. As I said before, it's your, I like to call them nunchuck style battery packs or crane battery packs. Um, yeah, so this is now fully charged. 
and it's now time to remove the butt plate. And there's your Tamiya connection. Okay, so let's just connect it there. I know it's on safe, so we're all good. Now, I do remember once I mentioned about making sure that your Airsoft uh, primary or sidearm is on safe just for safety reasons and I think it was a real firearms owner or it could have actually no let me not jump to conclusion it could have been anyone S laughing basically saying huh why do you need to make sure it's safe it's not like it's a real gun oh my gosh all you have to do is google airsoft injuries I'll say no more actually I will say more no it's not going to kill you it will sting you but if you're unfortunate enough to get a BB in the eye accidentally, it could blind you. It could also knock a teeth out or two. Trust me. Plus, the last time I checked, it's actually quite a good um, practice uh, for muscle memory if you do treat airsoft um, primaries and sidearms and stuff as if they were real, especially if you also own real firearms. It's all good muscle memory right let's just check that it works so right now it's in safe so let me put it on single shots again nothing in the barrel but i will still point it in a safe direction just in case um yeah so i'm just going to dry fire just for your benefit to make sure it works yep it works now let me put it on full auto make sure that works that works. Now, without touching that fire selector switch, I'm going to try what I was talking about earlier with this trigger. It's still on full auto, but if I pull the trigger partially, it should do a single shot. Boom. But then if I squeeze the trigger even harder, full auto, baby. Ha! So you literally don't have to keep going from your full auto to your single shots or full auto to your single shots. You can leave it in full auto and do your single shots like that. And then if you feel like a bit of fun. <laughs> right, let's get the mag ready. BB's in. You don't want no problem, want no problem with me. <clears throat> Roxanne, Roxanne. I'm, I mean, come on, literally, can you see why I can't stand high cap mags? The, yeah, no, no, don't get me wrong, they have their uses. I mean, you can put down 470 rounds from this bad boy without having to worry about changing the mag or refilling it. It's good, but. Oh my gosh, you might as well give this to a baby to play with. A rattle. And you know what else I love about the bullpup design is that whole close quarters thing where you're not having to go up there to put the mag in, you just tuck it in from behind. Ha, <laughs> nice. Get my eye protection on. Let's see what we're working with. Okay, so the FPS nicely maintained up there, similar sort of figures, 310, and that says 17.9 rounds per second. We can make that a comfortable 18 rounds per second. Nice. Now, do remember, if you are in the USA or certain other countries and your FPS limits for gameplay is a lot higher than the UK, these generally do come out of the box shooting in excess of 370. Now, 310 is still a little bit on the low side. I'm gonna tweak this and get this up to about 340, 350, because I do want to use it in a couple of games. But let's see how we get on with the accuracy test.
Do you know what? I can't be asked walking back there. I'm just gonna dump the mag right in front of the target. <laughs> right in front of the camera. <laughs> oh, you gotta love it. So there you go, people. This has been the Cybergun FN Herstal FN F2000. What are my initial thoughts? Well, straight away, you have to agree, it looks so authentic. It would be fantastic for movie making, even better for a bit of gameplay, especially CQB at an Airsoft gameplay site. I feel the build quality is pretty decent for something at this price range. And by the way, if you're in the UK, this is lower than £200. And I reckon in America, as things are generally cheaper, yet well below $200, but it looks the business and I absolutely love it. What I don't like is that high cap mag. Now you already know that, so there's no need <laughs> for me to go on about that. And I reckon the only thing that could possibly make this particular model better is if it was a gas blowback. Oh my gosh imagine that time to go shopping again <laughs> so yeah i bought this one and i absolutely love it it serves its purpose but i think too uh, maybe a bit of an upgrade and slapping a lipo in this will make this way better but other than that i again do love this it looks amazing i love that it's officially licensed yeah so go check your airsoft retailer of choice see if they've got this one in stock because they are getting fairly rare. Remember G&G &G had one out? Mm. But Cyma has come on board, of course, with the blessing of Cybergun and FN Herstal themselves to bring you this version, which is more readily available. So, thanks for watching. Catch me next time on the Airsoft Mike YouTube channel.